hi, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matthew Gucci. On Tuesday, Denver saw temperatures in the upper 60s with sunshine and pleasant conditions. Now, that may not sound special, but it is. That's because the Mile High City set a new record for the deepest they've gone into a fall without seeing a stitch of measurable snowfall. A measurable snow is anything more than a tenth of an inch. Less than that, we chart them as flurries because they don't really accumulate. We have observations at Denver going back to 1882. That's roughly 140 years. They jumped around from downtown to Stapleton Airport, now Denver International. But no matter how you slice it, folks in Denver still haven't seen their first flakes anywhere in the metro. In the mountains west of town, there have been a few flakes, but really not that much. The snowpack in the front range in the Rockies is running about 70% of average. Some places are down to 30 to 40% of average. Denver proper sees its first snowfall on average around October 18th, but that figure can fluctuate dramatically year to year. Last year, for instance, flakes flew on Labor Day weekend, and the city recorded more than an inch. More than four inches fell on September 3rd, 1961, their earliest snowfall on record. The previous record latest first snow was on November 21st, 1934. Denver has also gone more than 215 days this season without snow. Their last was back on April 21st when 2.6 inches fell. Things have been pretty dry in Colorado since summer. Between June 1st and now, Denver averages 7.5 inches of precipitation, but this year they've only received about 1.88 inches. That's at least since at least 1994. Part of the culprit, anomalously strong westerly winds. That's had a twofold effect. That helps weather systems move along in a progressive manner, dropping less precipitation. It also induces downsloping or air moving down the mountains, which warms up and dries out. That means warmer temperatures and drier conditions. Take a look at these incredibly low dew points back in November 17th. That means there's hardly any moisture in the air at all. It comes as no surprise that there's been very little precipitation during the past five months. The warm and dry conditions have sparked fire concerns across the Centennial State, including just west of Estes Park, where the Kruger fire burned last week. At least one death occurred when the pilot of a plane fighting the blaze was killed in a crash. Here you can see the hotspot burning from the Ghost East weather satellite, which peers down from 22,240 miles above the surface. Estes Park came very close last year to succumbing to the East Troublesome Fire, which shot the Continental Divide and burned 193,000 acres, eventually becoming the biggest wildfire in Colorado State history. 35,000 people were placed under a mandatory evacuation order. Human-induced climate change may be favoring more wildfire conditions in Colorado. 20 of the top 20 biggest wildfires on record in the state have all occurred in the past 20 years. That's all of them. It's tougher to disentangle the link between Colorado's first snow and climate change. Year-to-year -year variability is extreme. Last year, for instance, Denver went from 93 degrees on September 7th to 31 the next day with snow. A passing low shifted winds around 180 degrees. Initially, they were heading down the mountains, compressing, warming, and drying. Then a day later, they flipped around, going uphill, expanding, and cooling. Denver routinely sees wild temperature swings. Just a year prior, they went from 80 to snow in just eight hours' time. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.